say hi, Mike. Hi, everybody. Uh, this is actually our second vlog of like driving home the movie esque vlog of the weekend because we saw the Incredible Hulk movie yesterday, but we did we reviewed it from the couch. Uh, tonight we went to see Ex Machina, which is um, basically the only good movie out right now. That be right before Ultron. I don't well, know. That's probably not true. There's probably like a couple other things that are decent. I think Age of Adeline looks interesting. Just, I am just still, from the concept. It's from the concept. I'm just imagining it being really, really terrible. Like I'm, I'm not predicting good things for that movie. Hey, Canadian Goose. Hey, Canadian Goose out at night. It's really late, by the way. It it's is actually it, a little bit creepy. It's what? Like just midnight and a goose is out walk. walking around. They don't sleep. They never sleep. Anyway, we are getting behind, so we're gonna try to do an old-fashioned driving home the movie where we where we try to talk only about non-spoilers to begin with, and then cut to the spoilers. This is gonna be really hard though. We gotta keep because stuff happens gradually throughout this movie. Reveals happen gradually, so there's only. But I think we can start. There's at least, there's, there's a hard line between the beginning and end of this movie for in but terms of spoilers. <laughs> but there's such a gray line of what's really a spoiler and what's not a spoiler between those two points. Yeah, that's and that's why I tried really hard not to look too much into this movie. The only thing I knew going into it is that there's a a guy who works at a super basically Google. I, I think they base. I don't think that this guy built Google. Yeah, this guy built Google, and someone that works for him who is Domino Gleason, who we last saw in the really really good About Time movie, and he's going to be in uh, in Star Wars coming up. Uh, Both of these guys. Are yeah, nice. which and I told Mike about that because I was really excited about that. Um, so Oscar Isaac is the guy. If if you've seen. Um, if you've seen the trailers for it, he's the guy that's in the fighter. He's the fighter pilot. In Star Wars trailers. In the Star Not Wars the trailers. Ex trailers. Yeah. Um, and he plays the Google basically founder Inventor. guy. Yeah. Um, is the light. Is, is there. What's there the we go. I was like, there's. It's all shadow. It's like top of head was what? All shadow. Um, so yeah, um, Oscar Isaac, and he's been in a bunch of other things. He's like a really well like well esteemed actor plays uh this bearded guy like he he's in the woods and he's very like he's like, high he's recluse he's a recluse and he's all so he he's and, the founder he of has, google but he has like this high tech house out in the middle of nowhere so, yeah so we don't he, even know where what country this thing is but apparently it's big enough that you could fly for like over two, hours, two hours and it, it would be all of his stuff so Donald Gleason plays an American for once which is really it took me I think a good like 20 minutes to get used to that because I was like no he is not American this is odd for me to see it's at, weird at times it's, it was weird it, when he was talking about living in New York it sounded like he had a New York accent uh, I think it was Rhode Island huh no he said he lives well, in New long, York and, or he, maybe long and he moved there from uh, Oregon Okay, fine. But but, um, but anyway, so he his plays. His accent sort of bounced around. I'm trying to get bit. the. I'm trying to get to the plot, or else we will never get to the plot. Okay. So he wins. He wins this raffle uh, through the company that the guy owns to basically spend a week at his super expensive, super out in the like two hour countryside uh, home where the el where the helicopter that dropped him off. Could only take, could only drop him off so close to it because he is legally obligated to drop him off that far away from the place. So he's like, just follow the river. That's as far as I can go. So he gets there, and um, pretty pretty shortly after, he's like, oh, you have to sign a, a waiver. He's like, why am I signing a waiver? I can't tell you until after you sign a waiver. I want to share with you something. And, but he's like, I want to share with you something. Now, if you and don't that, sign it, we'll just have a nice weekend getting drunk. But if you do sign it... It will be amazing. Also, um, one of the things about the waiver is that uh, we can now monitor your email and internet and phone access. And if we find out you told anyone, that like all of this is completely... We will be able to find out whether you speak it or write it down or write it in a diary and hand it to someone. We will find out. So he goes, F fine. I, like His curiosity is peaked. And the first thing he says is... Do you know about the Turing test? And immediately, I will say, this is one of the things I really like about Donald Gleason. He's really good at getting those moments, those reaction moments, because almost immediately, like the guy's a coder, he knows what the Turing test is, and it clicks on for him, and he kind of 
half laughs. He's like, well, do you know what it is? And he says it out loud because, you know, it's a movie and they need the exposition. But it's that moment of like, he knows immediately what that is and what that probably means for this multimillionaire in the middle of the fucking forest to be asking him this when he when they were just talking about like projects and stuff. Um, so essentially he has been brought in as the lucky winner of this contest to test out this uh, this AI program, this AI robot. He is to be the human element in a Turing test. Yeah, and the Turing test is to test whether an AI can pass for human. Yes. Um, which he points out is like, well, if I already know that the AI is is an AI, then doesn't that defeat the purpose? Because the whole idea is that I'm supposed to be convinced that. And he goes, well, no, no. Now it's the next step. Like if you believe that it's free, that it's truly, if it truly has a consciousness. Yeah, a consciousness. Yeah. So it goes over the course of this week where there are, where there are part where he talks to this AI who is a female who is played by and I'm pro this will be the point in the review where I probably mess up someone's name uh, Alicia Vincander Vincander again I'm per terrible at pronouncing names um, but she reminds uh, me a lot of Natalie Portman yeah a little bit I'm trying to think who else she she looks like I mean she looks like a lot of actresses and obviously she didn't have hair so like it was all on the face. Um, first of all, the special effects on this on that thing was amazing. Yeah, that was really, really, really good. well good. I mean, like if this like, had been a short, like you could tell, like I could tell which parts were like CGI'd and like which parts were like probably clothing that she was wearing. But not but that bad. No, right? no, no, no. It looked fabulous. It was really, really good. Like props in if only if you go to this movie only to see the special effects on that it's so good um and also i just love like because it's in this like high tech it almost reminded me of not exactly the same because it's a very different setting but with moon as far as like the weird like white and gray and really like square settings. Of, remember the movie Moon, yeah, yeah, Moon with the space station? Mm -hmm. um, it had that kind of like yeah, I know the director really... is the guy directing the Warcraft movie. I know who I know and remember Moon. Oh, okay. I was saying like this movie? Who did direct it? Who did direct this movie? And of course I have the cast up and not the crew. I'll just go back. Um, directed directed by. by Alex Garland, who I don't recognize his name off the bat. He did 28 Days Later, so that makes sense. Um, the Beach, which is another kind of mind, mind fuck of a movie. Um, yeah, like, uh, anyway, so, <laughs> so, uh, it's, a lot of this is, is almost, pretty much entirely almost from, uh, the guy's point of view. What was his name again? His character's name. Now I gotta look for... Donald Gleason's character. Yeah, Donald Gleason's character. Uh, I think it was Nathan. No, Nathan was the guy, the Google guy. Yeah. And he was... Christopher? Cast, let's see. Sorry. Caleb. 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 Um, there were so few characters in this movie, we should have known this. So... Well, it's not like <laughs> they talk about their names all that often. Yeah, just a little bit. Um, so anyway, it... I don't know how much more we can say. There are twists and turns. Uh, there's a lot of um, mistrust on the part of Caleb. Um, and and you kind of go along for the ride. I was, I was fairly convinced early on what was going on. And then I got surprised. And I don't want to say how until we get past the spoilers. So... Yeah, I, I wasn't, like, so convinced. I was, there were some things that I was right on, some things I was wrong on, some things that I were pulling out of my, you know, and I was just, you know, like, maybe everything's a this, and then then I was wrong on that, too. But, you know, you, you, you sit through this movie, and you're, like, you're trying to make calls. Like, you're trying to think of what's going on. Like, there's a part really early on when he first sees or meets her, and he, you notice, like, the camera specifically has him noticing that there is a big crack in this like because it's it she has her own room that she's not allowed to leave and it's a pretty big room like it has space it has different sections in this like space um 
and there's a glass like box that he walks into so kind of like a viewing box you know she has basically a 700 square foot apartment yeah oh and this was like very some of this felt very portally as far as the rooms go yeah it, all concrete walls and glass and then doors. the glass yeah um so anyway so he's in this glass room and that's where like he has to sit down to talk to her through the glass but he notices the first time that there's this big crack in like the upper corner um, and I'm thinking like it's coming back like there's no way that's not coming back So what's going on with there? So that was in the back of my mind the whole time So when they end up revealing it like it's that sort of thing There are a lot of things that they like place in to try to give you hints um, As far as what's going on and I will say the other thing I will say Is that they did a good job because I I don't know if if you follow my Twitter You might have seen this when when I first saw the poster of it it looks the poster for this movie looks exactly like the um, the uh, commercial slash ad marketing ads for that one vodka where it was like really super skinny robots with like bold robots that have Is like that sky vodka. It's not sky. It's like skavak. It's something Russian. Okay. I can't remember. We just saw it. We walked past it the other day and I was like, hey, that's that thing that reminds me of that movie. Um, but you'd know it if you saw it. Like, and it's, it was super hyper uh, similar to uh, the poster on this movie. Um, which is like, oh, it's so creepy because like she's, you're basically hyper sexualizing what is essentially a naked robot woman. Um, just that she has gray parts instead of, you know, nudity. Um, so, I, like I said, we'll get into the spoiler part, but I will say that they do a good job of, like, saying how freaking creepy it is to, like, hypersexualize, like, robots and stuff. Like, they, they make a good point of saying how creepy the, um, the creator is for, like, giving her, like, giving her specific sexuality and like because she she does flirt with uh with the main with the protagonist a little bit and he call, he actually questions this guy creating this robot and he's like well there are no asexual people i'm like yeah there are those are some like that is, that is the worst answer you could give like well what i can't get like Everybody has a sexuality. That was basically his reason for giving said, her what, what exactly? and, and a gender too. And it's like, oh well, they're always you know everybody has a gender. But like some people don't identify as that a lot, and uh, so many people don't identify having a sexuality either. That's a thing. And I don't think. Don't get me wrong. Like this movie isn't saying that the creator is right. I'm just saying like you are not right character in this movie. You know what I mean? True, but what would truly be gender neutral? I mean... Well, that's the thing. Then you could get into arguments about how we see male as standard. Like yeah, if, exactly. Which, by the way, but that's not that's not get justifying his reason to have like a... A, a, a female a femme, a, yeah. Yeah, and have it be like standard European standards of beauty and like and our modern idea like body type ideals and all that stuff yeah. you know what I mean and I don't think the movie's trying to say that that what he's doing is right like clearly throughout the movie it it makes it's wanting you to question the the choices that this guy is making but I do find it interesting that it, at least that he brought it up like why did you make her why did you give her a sexuality oh and by the way he says like oh yeah and you can fuck her you can fuck the robot he at least gives her, he, he at least is kind enough to give her actual, like, pleasure centers down there because it would be kind of really disgusting to have a robot that you can actually, like, orgasm into as a man and not actually have her enjoy it. But again, it's really creepy because he even says, well, I'm basically like her dad. And it's like, why are you, why? Why are you? Why are you acting and talking about your child, basically, about this, if you really think that you're like her dad? Um, do you want to get into spoilers? Because I'm, like, bursting to talk, to talk about, about spoilers. to talk about a specific thing that is connected to this topic. Yes. Um, <laughs> what a lead-in. 
Uh, um, all right, so before wait, wait. we go, well, should we talk about like yeah. whether we would want should should people go to see this movie? Yeah. Uh, yeah, you should. I don't know if you need to see it in theaters. Um, so if you're busy and you know you're gonna go see Ultron or one of the other like big blockbuster movies coming out, and you don't have time. This is a really good when, thinky piece movie. A thinky piece movie. So like when you want to, when you want to go onto Netflix, but but not like but actually get to sit down and watch something. I would not. Excuse I would not me. throw this in the background while you're doing yes, something else. Because you'll get confused because you will not notice things. It's one of those ways that you really do want to have you want to watch. The theater experience is probably going to be so much more superior than watching it to it at home. Some of it though, like there are certain moments where certain characters are very very slow in their actions. I'm like, just keep go 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 keep go faster in this yeah, because yeah. I'm, I want to know what happens next. So that was a frustrating as someone who did not get to control how fast how the fast the goes. movie went. Um, Everybody was really good, and I don't know if I talked about uh, the actress who played the uh, the. Is that her role. name? Yeah, I did. I'm gonna try to say it again. Um, Alicia v- Vincander. And then there's also the Japanese girl. Um, yeah. So I am so sorry. I'm ter- uh Kyoko is the name of the character, and Son. She's oh, the main. Yeah, Mizuno. Yeah, which is it, which was awkward throughout the whole thing, where he's like, "Oh yeah, I chose her because she doesn't speak English." Yeah, we'll get into we'll get into that shit. Um, all right, so yeah, good movie. Go to see it. I will I will admit that there are like it is. I'm pretty. I know that it was a heart. It had to be an R. Heart so R. like, just realize realize that that's a thing. There are. It's not a PG thirteen movie. So like, just go into it knowing that that's a thing. Uh, but yeah, definitely go to see it. Got anything else to say for the non spoilers? For the good spo- movie. It's a good thinky piece movie. It makes you think. And it's, um, I think it's, I haven't seen, what's the movie, Her? Yeah, we haven't seen that yet. But. It's kind of in that realm. Without seeing her, just watching this movie and knowing sort of like what Her is about, I think this is a superior movie because it's, it's very along the same lines, but it's, it's different. I feel bad. very Big differences. I feel bad because yeah, I made a lot of is, I made a lot of judgment calls from what I've heard about her, the movie, and I really should see it because again, it's not good to judge a movie by what you hear. You should really watch it. So at some point, we'll probably end up watching it. Maybe when there's a lull in the summer. In the summer, it's just like oh, uh, that was. I will say I was worried about it going into this one. Um, I thought that it did enough interesting things. And actually doing some calling out on male stuff that it actually worked, even though it is about basically a woman who was created to be a thing by men. That man created a woman to be a thing, which is basically, you know, kind of messed up. And they go into it. So uh, with that, are we good? Yeah, we're good. All right. Spoiler time. So, um, the guy that fucks his robots. That's the, that's the thing. Uh, he, basically, he, um, the, you find out, uh, he, he hints the fact that he, that he, he has to end up erasing the actual minds of, of each version that he's created. But then you find out, uh, basically the guy sneaks, the protagonist sneaks around, he gets into the computer system, and you find out that not only did the guy um, first create basically robots that look like nude women, and he did not give them actual clothes, and then actually, like, but actually uh, made them, like, talk for him and stuff, and test it out, um... Essentially, after they freaked out, because like each one of them like were, was freaking out and like hitting and trying to escape and stuff, um, and then he uh, so he would deconstruct them, erase their brain, get it into the new one, and then just keep them around as mindless sex drones. Dr- sex drones. Yeah. So, in the closet. Yeah, th- no, literally, sh- he has a closet full of women that he can just take out and have sex with. And they are nude. Like, they are, they, these are actresses playing them that have nude body that are, com- so he designed, he clearly designed these robots, even the prototypes. Also, 
He didn't hang on to the black woman he made. No, no, he did. She was in the closet, too. Oh, really? I didn't see her. Yeah, she was. I think, I don't know if you saw at the very end, but you saw when uh, what's when um, Caleb was opening the doors. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, yeah, no, he clearly, like, I the one that was the thing that I liked about this movie, because, like, it, it makes you want, it, it does say, like, oh, you have to decide about, but it pretty clearly says that no matter what, happens between um between aunt what was her name ava yeah ava Mm -hmm. and caleb and that that the creator guy was really messed up like he was clearly he was clearly unethical in everything that he chose to do with this and the fact that even for the prototypes he made them into actual nude women is so and would not give them clothes is so messed up and then he ended up using it turns out that the Japanese woman that was his, her, his servant, who he also slept, we clearly saw like making out with and about to have sex with, and then also doesn't speak any English. Yeah, she is a mindless robot. Right At right least wrong. it's implied that she was watching. That was the thing. She was watching. It, I feel like this is going to be one of those movies where if you rewatch it, you can make the case that she actually had some intelligence and the two of... Them are working together? Yeah. yeah. No, I don't think that they were necessarily working together until the very end. I think what might have happened was they connected that they were basically the same... Cre- that they, they were the same thing because he had, he had said that he had erased... He used the same brain... And he was, but he was erasing all the memories. So maybe some of the memories had gotten connected, and they felt like they were the same person. Maybe. I feel like that might have happened. So, and then that might be why. Well, we why it happened? We're just what, speculating there. On yeah, that. yeah. I think there's a lot to be said. I think there are a lot of hints and a lot of details that they could arguably, that they could arguably. Um, you know, like that they could have dropped in there to hint. But I think that there's more to that previous version of her than than what you see on the first watch through. Yeah, that's what I think. But again, the fact that the crea- that this that the Google guy they don't call it Google I forget like Blue Blue Book, Blue Book <laughs> which was clever because when you see the when you see the protagonist for the first time he looks at his phone and realizes there's no reception out in the forest says blue book and i was like oh man they got product placement for some weird ass phone that i've never heard of no no apparently apparently they did this they did the thing that no one ever does and put product placement for a fake product and basically also set up the idea that not only is this software that not only is this a a uh, google or like a search engine but it's also mm-hmm. the hardware he's got everything you know it's a very hard Google analog. Yeah, exactly. No, it's clearly, it's, I don't know if there's a specific person that this was supposed to be targeting in Google. I think it was just the idea of like, what if, what if all the executives of Google were the same person? They were all like an uh, immoral, amoral, inethical douchebag. <laughs> Who loves his liquor? Who love? He gets drunk so much. And then he's the like, first, now I'm like, gonna punch something to the like. The first eighty percent of this movie, he <laughs> is like drunk every scene. Yeah, it's like, man, you no wonder you have sex robots because you're just mis- you seem very miserable. Like this, uh, um, Isaac does a really Oscar Isaac, I think Oscar Isaac does a really good job in this because you really dislike him pretty early on. Like he's one of those guys where yeah he'll talk over you and he'll keep setting the terms of the conversation, you know. Mm-hmm. And I hate people like that. And immediately I was like, oh man, I don't like you, and I know I'm not supposed to like you. And like any any bit of charm, like is so clearly false any sense of like of connection is so false he like i said clearly sending the terms in every conversation but um yeah so i do what i do like about this movie is the fact that uh we i i want to talk about the about the nudity as far as because it actually starts really late and they use it in really smart ways because one you see you see a little bit of the nipple um, of the when you think that the servant is just a human being servant, um, and uh, and there's already a sense of like she is, 
used to being nude. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, it already gives you, like, that really creepy, like, this is the tone that the creator guy set for his employee. So when you see him, like, using these robots and, and having them be, look like nude women with absolutely no clothes, there is that sense of, of, um, what is it? What am I thinking of? Like, um, you know, take stripping away their, their, um, you know, choice in the matter, I guess. Does that make sense? Like he's Mm -hmm. pushing the sexuality onto these creatures that he's creating it. And he, he talks about their sex about, uh, Ava's sexuality and, you know, the whole like, well, it's just natural. It's like, no, you are a man forcing Sexuality. Forcing unpersing. hypersexuality, sexuality that you clearly are into, onto your creations, and that's really messed up. And you see from the protagonist's face that he is horrified by these videos of of these women, like, screaming and trying to get out, and, like, to the point where their arms are falling off, and him just, like, calmly just, like, scrapping them, using them again, you know? Uh, and then, uh, so at the end, uh, Ava with the help of the guy, escapes. Or she gets out of her room. Uh, She ends up, with the help of the Japanese robot, killing her her creator. Um, And a scene that is so slow. It's another one that was so slow. But she ends up going into his bedroom, finding the... See, that's the other thing. She had to have known that they were there, which means I think the Japanese... Uh, android talk to her about it. There had to have been something. Yeah. Which is driving me crazy. I want to know what they talked about, but you you don't hear it. It's mute, but you just see them, like, talking to each other. At least her talking to the one who can't, who presumably can't talk. But she goes into the room, and she starts taking off the, the piece of skin. She takes off, uh, she, her arm got ripped off. So she starts taking, uh, she, she replaces her arm and she has like a, what looks like a human arm. Um, and so by the end, while, while throughout the, um, the movie, she's had like the, those like gray parts to her. She now has this, she looks like, it, she looks like a nude woman. It's clearly the actress's first time, like without any of the CGI on her. Right. And what I liked about this was that it is again it's a full frontal and back because it's it's through you see her through a mirror um nude shot and it's effective because this is her choosing to be naked this is her choosing her own body and and it is her choice to to pick out those pieces and to make herself into her full how she sees herself this is how you do nudity well in a movie like this. This is how you do. This is how you do um, where you're actually having it affect the character, and you see these two different kinds of nudity. So you see the guy, the you know, this man creating women in the image that he wants them to be in, uh, out, with no free will of their own to choose to be nude or to you know to seem nude because obviously like she's actually that's the thing she's putting on the skin so she was already less than that so but anyway so and then the other type is her actually again choosing putting on this putting on the skin choosing so that when she stands in front of the mirror nude this isn't someone stripping away her this was her putting on what she wanted to put on um Arguably for the first time, because I'm not entirely sure that that what she remember what she wore throughout the because she would put on this dress and say like oh this is what we would wear when we went out when we went if we went out on a date. Mm-hmm. I'm more and more, I'm convinced that all of those clothes were put there specifically because that's the kind of girl that the that the protagonist likes because it's highly implied. Not even implied. It's flat out said that the creator didn't want him to to do to say like, oh, she seems like she's human. It's I want to see if if she can convince you to ha- to help her escape. 
which seems like a terrible idea in hindsight because she does. So if he really did pro, if the if the idea is that he programmed her to trick him, surprised it went off like it it was successful. It was a resounding success. <laughs> yes. Too much so. This is why this is basically portal. You know, the, she's she got too good at the test. Um, so, so yeah, like, so arguably, arguably everything that she wore to please him in order to get, gain his trust and, and have him empathize with her could have arguably been just like whatever, you know, the research they did on him when they chose him so that it would be his ideal woman. As if you remember, she doesn't choose the short haircut. She doesn't choose the short haircut that she was wearing around him. On the way out. On the way out. She chooses long hair. She That was her choice. When she wears the dress, it's way more... It's structured. It's not flowy like the dress she was wearing before. So it's arguable that that was all a trick. Now, it could have... It's not just necessarily her tricking him. It could have easily been that the creator also had a... I keep calling him the creator. I forget what... What was the character's name? Uh, Nathan. Nathan. That Nathan could have helped put that in because they basically flat out said that that they used... Um, to make Ava's uh, face, they used a combination of all of... Uh, of all of Caleb's uh, porn searches and <laughs> created a face. And he guesses, Caleb guesses it, and he goes, well, you know, I'm like... I'm not going to deny that. I'm not going to deny That's basically what, I mean, what else is my search engine for if not, if not finding out porn analytics? You know, you know, it's basically, yeah. So the idea is that I think... And the more and more I think about it, because I didn't even realize that until we started talking about it. But yeah, that's pretty much, like, it's it's pretty clear by the end that, that it was all a lie to her. At least not necessarily the fact that she wanted to escape, because the first thing she does, she seems to do is go to New York and, and uh, people watch, which is exactly what she tells him that she wants to do, you know? Mm -hmm. He asks, what do you want to do when you go out? So I don't think that's a lie. I don't think all of it was a lie. I think there was, but I think there was enough there uh, to be a lie to that, um, that basically to trick him because again, this is part of the spoilers. Uh, she locks him in, which is kind of a dick move. A little bit. <coughs> which either, either is a sign of like, I will survive no matter what. So or that's maybe human. She, she well, yeah, but also we pointed out earlier, maybe it's that she lacks empathy. Yeah. On the other hand, there are lots of people who could say that lacking empathy is not necessarily an inhuman trait either. Mm -hmm. um, what I said while we were waiting for the movie to end, because I didn't think there was going to be an ending credits, but we watched some of the we watched some of the um, credits. Um, I said that I really expect there to be people who leave this movie with the with the message in their brains that this basically that oh man you can't trust women <laughs> they're going to trick you and use you and then leave you that's what i expected i not not from us but like i i just expect that people are going to have the takeaway of this movie be you can't trust women <laughs> What was, like, the only other alternative is that this woman needed this this man to help her escape her abusive father. It's like, so if the, between those two, her having the wherewithal to just leave. Like, yeah, it's cruel, but it's also, like, there's a lot of, like, she is choosing this. I don't think that's necessarily, you know, I'm not that... Like yeah, I, you kind of you kind of feel bad for the guy, but at the same time, you're kind of glad that she escaped. Yes, he would have been a reliable a liability if he left with her. That's and that's kind of the thing too is that he was so attached to her. I don't know if he would have just let her live. That's true too. You know what I mean? He became attached. He became. And he made it kind of about him. Yeah. I did like the fact that he that he was smart enough to do. He did the um, the Ozymandias thing from Watchmen. I did this 15 minutes ago. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, I love that line. I kind of went like, Ooh! 
we smacked Mike a little bit in the chest because it was so good. I was thinking when he was like, I'm going to get him drunk. I'm like, why didn't you just do that before? He got, he had him drunk. Um, yeah, it was so... I, I feel like we're we're also talking about stuff we hadn't discussed, but yeah, like it was. Um, I thought that they did a really good job. I really like these actors. Um, I want to see them all in other movies, so I'm excited again for Star Wars. That was one of the other things we said in, while we were waiting for the credits. I'm like, I am really excited for Star Wars because these are really good actors. Um, and as far as like revealing stuff, they did a re the director and the writing did a really good job of revealing things slowly. And I'm not talking just about the, like, the, the surprises. I'm talking about the world building, um, explaining who people are. They, I like movies, especially speculative science fiction-y movies and ones that are, like, hard, uh, hard science fiction. So, you know, ones where it's way more likely to happen, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, I like movies like that that slowly leak out the exposition and slowly give you that information instead of trying to tell you right away. And this movie did a very good job of that. You don't even know... Um, I don't even think you know what the... Uh, what the like what the company was until the robot starts talking about her creator, you know? Something like that, yeah. Yeah. Um... Although you could pretty much guess it was Google from about the second scene. Yeah. Google esque. I was thinking Steve Jobs. Oh no, no, you totally get on. you totally get that. Especially when he starts mentioning the search engine thing. Uh, you totally get it. Uh also they had some little biting commentary on the whole like, Oh yeah, the way we created the facial expressions, we just looked at everyone. We turned on everyone's cell phone cameras and microphones and listened for a while. Indexed all everything. The, we had have, we have all we need. All the other all the other companies knew we were doing it and but they couldn't say anything because they're doing it too. Ha ha ha. So let's get to a drink. <laughs> um it was alright, so like I said, it was um it was a really interesting character piece. I will say I did believe I I wonder what what it is for each person who who did actually trust Ava, because I trusted her fairly early on, mostly because I I think she was the one basically being treated like an object. So for me, there was a lot of sympathy there, and and it didn't connect until way later how, like, how much manipulation was going on. But that was me, I think. It's interesting. I want to know, not to put you on the spot, Mike, as a man, but how much... How much you empathize with her as, or how much you connected to the protagonist who empathized with her? Uh, well, I did connect to the protagonist, but, I mean... I know. I, I empathize with the robot. I wanted them to both get out, but I kind of had the feeling that they both weren't getting out. I kind of had the feeling that... It was either going to go the dark route where Nathan killed and dismembered both of them, or it was going to go the dark route where she escapes and leaves him there. Yeah. And I didn't. I didn't necessarily see Nathan's death coming, but I figured. When I saw the when I saw what's her face was holding the knife. The, yeah, the, yeah, and that's when yeah. I was like, "Oh, we know okay, where this is going." Yeah, that, that's about when I saw Nathan. I will death say, as as far as her having, I kind of really figured Nathan was going to be the one ending up on top, because he's the <sighs> megalomaniac, giant money machine, and yeah, he has true. all the plans, and he knows everything about what's going on. A couple things. The other I thing, I think he was the. I thought he was going to be the main puppet master, sort of like thing. the other thing that I thought about, as far as oh, um, the other thing I thought. I thought everyone that uh, Donald Gleason interacted with was going to be a robot. I thought everyone, Nathan and all of them, were robots. <laughs> and that was one of the ideas I had in my head early. It was like, oh, Turing test thing. What if they're all robots? Yeah. And but that's the test. This is, this is what I was thinking, too. I wondered if through, basically, if uh, Caleb, so the protagonist, if he ended up destroying her when she didn't, like, respond to him in the right way... Or I wondered if it would become one of those things where it's nice guy turned into, like, I, you don't appreciate me, so I'm going to hurt you. Which, 
let's be honest, that happens. So I wondered if that was going to be a thing, like where he tried to be her knight in shining armor and he couldn't, and it wasn't, he didn't get out of it what he thought, so he ended up reacting to her. I wondered if that was going to be something. The other thing I thought, which I think actually might prove that she is, in fact, you know, artificial, like when you're talking about the artificial intelligence and the Turing, the one time when she is absolutely positively alone, there is no one watching her, like no one is. She walks into that main, like, living room area, and she just, like, does this little smile and bounce in a very human way. There's no one watching her. There's no reason for her to, to do that unless she truly feels that way. So I think in that moment, I think it kind of, I think that was specifically put in there because it's the only time when everybody is either dead or trapped in a room without any, without any cameras pointed at her. Um, yeah, so that's, so I feel like that's kind of showing that, that that was her part of her as, as a close to humanity as she'd get. Okay. You know what I mean? I can see that point, but um, I gotta believe that there's probably still flaws. Well, but are we gonna talk about human being flaws? No, more like probably, well, like lack of empathy. I would call okay. that a flaw. Yeah. And that's me. It is interesting that she doesn't let him. I would I would want to know the the specific reasoning for it if it you know what I mean yeah and that's kind of is the the one frustrating part of this is that I wish I could get inside her head which is why but that's the thing is that you're you know we have so many movies where you you don't see things from there are women in the movies but you don't see them from their point of view mm -hmm. you know what I mean you see it through the one the straight white guy's point of view look what that gets us that gets us with a lot of questions about the female character doesn't it there's, this, there's one female character who barely talks at all. Exactly. Don't By the way, I don't know if we said this before. Technically, this might pass the Bechdel test because we do see the two of them talking and they both have names and we don't think they're talking about men. Unless it's about killing... Nathan. Yeah. I think there was one point where she says, who are you? Which, by the way, just be, when she first, when the oh, woman yeah, first yeah. walks into the room, which, again, may, proves that it wasn't, either either Caleb programmed her to do that, or, or she, I think it had to have been, because she was watching, she had been watching the video screens. Remember the uh, the Japanese mm -hmm. robot? She was watching the video screens, so she must have had some semblance of what was going on. There was no reason for Caleb to have programmed her to do that. You know what I mean? So I'm thinking that there's something connected there. It, uh, and I don't think that there's any... That's the frustrating thing. I think we could rewatch this movie and get a little semblance of it, but I think those were specific things that they set up in the movie to show that that uh, that she still had sentience, especially because the one robot in the closet that smiled at her uh, smiled at uh, Ava at the end. Remember? Did you see that bit? The one that she took the that she took the skin from. She kind of the the robot that was in the closet turned to her and smiled just a little bit. Which makes me wonder exactly what's going on. Oh, that's it's a frustrating movie because I I know there's something underneath there, and I'm also really tired. So, you what, any other thoughts, Mike? It's a fantastic thinky piece movie, and watch it in if you're in the mood for that. Like I don't think you got to be in the mood for this movie. Yeah, you got to be in the mood for this movie. <laughs> you got to be prepared to think for a while. And I'm really tired, and it's it's Sunday, so I have to go to work tomorrow. We both have to, and I I feel like we could talk about this movie more, but I'm just so tired. Are we good? Are we're we good. good? I think we're good. Go see this movie. It's a good movie. So, uh, Katie, we can talk for more hours on this movie. But I think we should. really could. It's I think it's um. <sighs> see, I keep I keep going. I think it's um. I think it's um. But. It, we're really tired, so I think it's time for us to go to bed. 
Katie and Mike. Just and we'll see you later.